I, uh, Professor Santoro, I met several years ago. I told her he's perfect for learning transanal ultrasound. Please, my fr okay, we leave his slides. I have uh, some uh, historical slides, the very old machine. I was with Professor Bartom in London, and it was a huge machine. Now we have the 3D machine. Next slide, please. It's a, a completely a big development. And as we have seen now the Olympus instrumentation, the ultrasound, it seems for me that's something uh, really the past and the quality of the picture you will see now. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, is much better. You see the old instrument by Clive Bartram. Now the today, please click. Uh, that's uh, probe we use today. Next slide, please. We don't talk, next slide already, we don't talk about pixel here. We uh, have here much more information. That's why you can understand perhaps why we are superb to the um, MRI. We call it uh, from the pixel, the vector information on ultrasound is quite um, an intensive one and the um, um, resolution is much higher. But instead of uh, taking the time away from Professor Tarasantoro, I'm very pleased to introduce to him and the books he has on the market are the most sold electronical books in the world that says everything. And Professor Santoro is, by the way, the president of the Italian Coloproctology Society, and I'm very pleased to introduce him. Thank you so much. Um, first, I want to thank uh, the course directors. <laughs> Um, Stefan Sival, uh, Philip uh, Bershinger, sorry if I didn't uh, <laughs> uh, say this in the correct way, and my friend Andreas Müller for this kind invitation. So I know that most of you are uh, endoscopists, so you like to see the resection, submucosal dissection, and maybe I don't want to bore you for uh, this uh, presentation, I will try to squeeze in the 15 minutes. I have to answer one question. Regular colonoscopy, but persisting defecation disorders. How to proceed? So this is uh, the question for me. I will try to answer using uh, the most recent uh, guideline. I was uh, part of this international uh, team of experts um, from all over the world with the urogynecologists, colorectal, surgeon, radiologists, and we spent three years trying to define the terminology for female anorectal dysfunction on behalf of the International Urogynecological Association, IUGA, and the International Continent Society. So after three years, finally we published uh, this uh, paper, these two papers. One was on neurourology and urodynamics, and the second one on International Urogynecological Association. And one of the reasons, because we spent three years on this kind of paper was because of constipation. It was because of to answer the question that Andreas asked me to answer today. And uh, this is uh, what we produced. So with this slide, I can stop my presentation. You just take a photo and that's done. <laughs> anyway, uh, if, if you won't tolerate me for more minutes, maybe I can help you to interpret this uh, kind of algorithm that I find very uh, uh, easy and very useful for all of us. So just start uh, number one, step one. You see a patient with constipation in your office. The most important things, mandatory, is uh, to take a very detailed history and physical examination. To try to differentiate if the constipation is low transit or is outlet obstruction. The definition of uh, these two kinds of uh, constipation uh, or, or outlet obstruction are published in these terminology papers. We can read slow transit is infrequent bowel motion due to delay in transit of bowel contents to reach rectum, whereas outlet obstruction is the difficulty evacuating stool requiring standing efforts at defecation, often associated with the lumpy or hard stool, sensation of incomplete evacuation, feeling of unretal blockage, obstruction, or manual assistance to defecate. You can know this if you do a very detailed history and you talk to your patient and you ask your patient the, the, the right and the good questions. Uh, still, uh, we have now the uh, Roma 4, 
criteria, but still the raw material criteria are valid, and these are the criteria to define the functional constipation. I don't want to be uh, and to read this, this, uh, this uh, table because you know this one, but these are questions that you need to ask to your patient. Just to indicate if, uh, you, if your patient has a small bowel uh, uh, or an um, outlet obstruction. So, and then you go to the digital rectal examination. Again, you can find these on our terminology papers, but it's very important to do a very good physical uh, examination, uh, inspection, and then uh, digital rectal examination to feel uh, what? to feel uh, uh, the, the, the functionality of the sphincter, to see if they have or not uh, some form of a prolapse, uh, to see if uh, you can feel the puboretalis, and you ask to squeeze or to relax, uh, uh, if there is pain or not. So all this you can do with a, a careful physical examination. And this is what you can see, obviously, in your office, maybe some form of prolapse, and if you see some form of prolapse, you have to treat this kind of patient. After history and physical examination, you can offer colonoscopy if you have any suspicious of a rectal tumor. So a patient with older age, modification on the, on the um, uh, bowel movement in the last uh, period, a loss of weight, so I don't have to teach you the, 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 how, how to detect the patient to offer a colonoscopy to see if you have a cancer or if you have regular colonoscopy. Now we can go deep inside. You did history, you did the physical examination, you performed the colonoscopy, colonoscopy is regular, what next? Next is don't do any kind of assessment. Stop, stop at this uh, first stage and try to give some advices to the patient to improve uh, uh, as a first line uh, uh, treatment measures. Um, diet, increase, uh, increase uh, the, the fiber in, in, in the diet, uh, address toileting behavior, increase uh, the water intake, uh, suggest physical exercise. So this is the first line measurement. Don't ask for any kind of assessment but colonoscopy if you have suspicious. And then you say, you do this one, we will see in two or three months and see if you improve it or not. But maybe after two, three months, the patient come back to your office and says, nothing has changed. So what can they do now? And at, at this point, you have to go inside with the second line assessment using some special investigation to detect which kind of uh, disorders is behind your constipation symptom. And you have two uh, modalities. You can do imaging or you can do anorectal physiological investigation. Which kind of imaging? Ultrasound, MRI, transit study, evacuation proctography, or which kind of physiological investigation? Anorectal manometry or neurophysiologic study. Why do we need imaging? Because uh, uh, constipation is a symptom. Outlet obstruction is a symptom. You don't know what is the pathophysiological mechanism behind. And uh, in the same female with the same symptom, you can have uh, more reason behind. They can have uh, uh, um, hemorrhoids or prolapse or different kind of prolapse coexisting. And if you see this in your office, you say, obvious, there is a, a vaginal wall prolapse. Prolapse is like a hernia, but you don't know what is inside the hernia sac. Maybe this patient has something uh, 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 different content. You can have a rectocil, you can have a enterocil, you can have a combined prolapse, but clinically, if you only see the vaginal wall prolapse, you cannot define what is inside. And this is the reason to have uh, some form of imaging. Imaging help the doctor to understand what is inside the vaginal hernial sac. And we say that we have three fundamental modalities, evacuation proctography, MRI, and ultrasound. How to select which kind we can choose? Evacuation proctography is commonly used, has a lot of advantages, of course, but even has some disadvantage. As MRI, 
MRI has a, a many advantage, but is a difficult uh, technique and uh, is not widespread and uh, is uh, uh, more, more expensive. So what we proposed with another international team, and we worked uh, on this uh, a couple of years, was to find a compromise. S let's say that uh, we can have uh, something in our hand, like ultrasound, that we can use in our office as a, a screening test to select the patient that maybe that can even need of a more uh, deep full assessment like MRI or proctography. And we introduced this term, integrated approach to pelvic floor ultrasonography. That means that uh, uh, we need a combination of uh, different probes, a different modality to assess all the aspect of the pelvic floor. Three main uh, probes. We saw today two of these probes, the electronic and the rotating probe, but we even have a convex probe for transperineal ultrasound. And uh, uh, I published this study uh, um, with uh, Peter Dietz, uh, that is a gynecology from Australia. He published a lot, even on this uh, topic. And uh, using ultrasound, we can detect uh, all the mechanism behind the same symptom, that is outlet obstruction. Transperinal ultrasound is very easy. Convex probe is positioned in the translabial, so it's not invasive. And you can have this field of view from the symphysis pubis to the cochix, and you can visualize the anterior, the middle, and the posterior compartment. And this is the typical image. Maybe if we can have this light uh, 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 off. Thank you. I don't need the light on, my, on myself. So symphysis pubis, blood, vagina in the middle, anorectal junction, the puborectal is behind. You can do this. Uh, at rest, and then uh, you trace a line, and you ask your patient to do a, 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 a valsalva maneuver, to push down, to see the displacement of the pelvic organs below this line. Any descent below this line is uh, some form of prolapse, like in this uh, lady, with uh, a multi-compartimental uh, prolapse. Bladder, cystocele, small bowel, enterocele, and rectocele, all three prolapse in the same female. Um, again, this patient uh, has an outlet obstruction. We asked it to do Valsalva maneuver, and we saw a bulging of the anterior rectal wall, similar to the same image that we can have using defecography. And we can measure the depth of uh, this uh, bulging of the rectal wall. And, uh, Sorry, I, I cannot sh uh, show you video because uh, five days ago my laptop was stolen. So I only uh, have an uh, image. This was a disaster, but uh, I, I mean, I can show you something interesting as well. Rest. You see symphysis, bladder, uh, uterus with the vagina, rectum, puborectalis behind. We ask patient to do Valsalva maneuver, and what happens? That bladder is still there. There is no prolapse of the bladder, and look at the pocket. And, and, and the prolapse of the anterior rectal wall. But we can even uh, know more. Another patient, this is at rest, asked to push again and look at the rectocele forming and the, the hyperechoic uh, uh, um, material inside the, the rectocele is a stool. So this is a stool trapping inside the rectocele. That is very important for the surgeon to know if the rectocele is functional or not. If there is a soul trapping, is a rectocele that is uh, uh, um, connected to outlet obstruction. You can have a combined prolapse. Again, you see the prolapse, you don't know what is inside. And look at this patient. We can see bladder, we can see the rectum. So multi-compartimental, you need to treat in the same uh, operation. You ask your urogynecology to fix uh, the bladder, and I fix uh, the rectum. Rectal prolapse. Rectal prolapse can be visualized as an enlargement of the rectal diameter. This is the rectal diameter at rest. You ask to do Valsalva. And if this diameter becomes uh, double compared to at rest, this is uh, a diagnosis of intussusception, internal intussusception, or rectal prolapse. Enterocil, small bowel entering between uh, the rectum and the vagina. And look at this image. Again, the symphysis, the blood is there. 
This is our enterocil, and this is the rectocil. <coughs> Today, we are assisted with Andreas, a lady that we didn't show you, but we have uh, uh, the video clip, and uh, we saw an uh, enterocil and rectocil in this lady that had hysterectomy, similar, similar cases. Uh, we, uh, we will publish in two months uh, this Cochrane. Uh, this Cochrane was, uh, uh, I was a part uh, with uh, Abdul Sultan for, from the UK. Uh, we did uh, the Cochrane to compare the three techniques of uh, MRI, uh, evocation proctography, and ultrasound to see which is the best. The result of the Cochrane is that there is no difference between MRI, defecography, and uh, ultrasound. The only difference is that uh, the fecography is overstaging, so is is looking at too much compared to uh, ultrasound that is more reliable. And uh, even more, we know that the patient with the outlet obstruction can be, can even have uh, fecal incontinence, and this should be addressed with uh, another probe with uh, a, a endoanal ultrasound to visualize the three level of the anal canal. The upper level I showed you live with the puborectalis muscle, the middle level with the two rings of the internal and external, and the lower level with the subcutaneous part of the external sphincter. This is a, a cadaveric dissection using the internal and the external sphincter, and this is ultrasound, internal and external sphincter. And I think that these images are really amazing. Now, if this is regular, let's see what happens if uh, you have a patient with uh, some form of damage to the sphincter. That can happen during uh, a vaginal delivery. Vaginal delivery can uh, give this kind, this kind of, uh, of uh, injuries that are defined oasis, obstetric and sphincter injuries. We have four degree. Degree three and four are the degree involving the anal sphincter. And this is a typical uh, lesion 3B. You see that the sphincter internal is regular, but the external sphincter is broken, is 3B. This is a 3C because uh, you have uh, damage both involving the internal and the external sphincter. Or this is a grade four, communication between the anal canal and the vaginal canal, and you see that the sphincter is completely missing anteriorly, half, uh, 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 anterior half of the anal canal. And this is the reconstruction with 3D. And uh, in uh, uh, um, uh, one month ago, there was uh, a publication from uh, the ICI, International Consultation on Incontinence, and uh, this is the se sixth consultation that included our uh, uh, integrated approach in the guideline of the society. And uh, I was a part of uh, the second committee on incontinence, and we defined that uh, ultrasound and the anal ultrasound is the gold standard investigation to assess the anal sphincter integrity. Other kind of assessment, briefly, anorectal manometry. We have a different kind of uh, manometry with the water perfused system, solid state catheters, or we can uh, have uh, uh, high resolution manometry. Why to do manometry in outlet obstruction? To see the functionality of the sphincter, of course, but more important to see the rectal functionality. The first sensation, the urgency, the maximum tolerated volume, the rectoanal inhibitory reflex for hitch sprung disease, or the balloon expulsion test. Very important. I love and, and I recommend to perform anorectal manometry in, in, in uh, female with outlet obstruction. And then there is a high resolution. Color is the pressure in this kind of uh, uh, um, assessment. That's in pressure. You see uh, the yellow color. You ask to squeeze red color. And uh, you ask to, to, to strain, and you see how there is a, a green color because uh, there is a relaxation of the sphincter. And if you have a uh, dyssynergic defecation, what happens? If you have dyssynergic defecation, if you ask your patient to strain, the sphincter will contract. And uh, how to treat this one? You will treat this one with biofeedback. So let's go back uh, to Okay, briefly other uh, uh, physiological investigation like uh, uh, EMG. This is uh, not so important, even uh, the, the, the guideline do not recommend to perform because there is only one indication for neurophysiology in uh, uh, outlet obstruction, and this is to detect if you have or not a pelvic floor dyssynergy. If you ask a patient to, re, uh, to, to push, the sphincter will relax. 
But if you have this synergic defecation, the, the activity, electrical ati activity will increase. But you can see this one with high resolution, so really you don't need to do a more invasive test. Why to perform assessment with the non investigation? Imaging can uh, uh, provide information regarding morphology of the pelvic organs. Anoretal motometry will give information regarding the rectal perception, rectal compliance, and EMG regarding the functionality of the nervous pathway. I want to come back to our algorithm, so now it's easier to understand. Number one, history and physical examination. Number two, treat with the first line measurement. Number three, patient come back, go for special investigation. Number four, you now you know now more about uh, the reason behind, and you can treat more your patient. You can uh, recommend the medication, like uh, laxative or uh, 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 irrigation. You can send your patient for rehabilitation if they have the synergy, or for biofeedback. Or maybe you can uh, use a sacral nerve stimulation that is the implant of uh, a tiny lead in the third sacral foramen to simulate the, the, the pudendal nerve. Uh, is a two-stage uh, procedure. Uh, uh, the test phase, you you mm, you implant the the, the ten the lead. You wait for one month. If you have a good response, you can go to the second phase with the, the uh, IPG, the um, impulse uh, uh, generator for definitive simulation. Anyway, in uh, 2015, another Cochrane. Uh, uh, published uh, uh, the recommendation for SNS for incontinence and constipation. No doubt that for uh, in fecal incontinence, SNS is really effective and working, but for constipation, the two uh, uh, um, uh, randomized trial did not prove any advantage of SNS. In the States, FDA approved SNS only for fecal incontinence. For constipation, now it's recommended only if you are part of a clinical trial. First and last step of our algorithm, you can go to surgical definitive treatment. We have uh, many different forms for treatment, minimal invasive, okay, SNS we said already, abdominal approach, transvaginal, transperineal, transanal approach. How to select which kind of approach to perform? I will finish with this slide. Surgery for obstructive defecation syndromes, is there an ideal technique? Answer is no. There is no any ideal technique. You have to tailor the treatment according to your patient, and in this uh, setting, uh, imaging and uh, the other in, uh, um, investigation can help a surgeon to define the best uh, uh, approach to use. Uh, I, I um, welcome you, if you are more interested, to, to, to join uh, uh, me uh, in Treviso this year in November, for uh, the traditional ultrasonographic course that they run every year. This year will be between November 22 to, no to 24. You can write me or you can ask Andreas Mueller for the program. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Centoro.